come on into my kitchen today while I make pressure canned chicken stew using frozen vegetables. Yes, you heard me right. I'm pressure canning chicken stew or chicken soup with frozen vegetables. I'm going to be using fresh boneless skinless chicken. I have celery, onions, peppers, and a bag of mixed vegetables. I'll also be using salt, pepper, thyme, and garlic powder. Let's get to it. I've just taken that bag of vegetables and I've put it in a bowl with the hottest tap water I can get. I don't need to cook these. You could put them on the stove and bring them to a boil if you wanted to or pop them in the microwave to defrost them, but I have to chop vegetables and I have to chop, uh, cut up that chicken, so I might as well do this the lazy way and let the hot water do it just by sitting there. If you use them as frozen vegetables, that could throw off the temperature in your pressure canner and we don't want to do that. We want the pressure canner to come up to temperature properly and for the required length of time. So these are just going to be defrosted. And my vegetable scraps are going to be going in the freezer so that I can make vegetable broth in a couple of weeks. I just want to give you an example of how much one quart of soup is really going to be. This is a two quart pot. This is the soup we use for our Campbell's condensed soups or any of our chunky soups or anything like that. And that is it. It only fills half the pot. The pot's only as big as my hands. It's not a huge pot. It only gives you half a pot. So for my husband, that's one serving. But for me, that's two servings or maybe three even. By having that in mind, we'll know how much seasoning to put into the jars. We won't overdo it that way. I have my veggies defrosted, I have my meat cut, and I have my fresh veggies chopped up. Everything is ready to go. Because I'm doing raw pack and cold vegetables, I don't need to heat my canner. Cold product, cold jars, cold canner. And that is going to sit there. It has water in it now, three liters of water, and it has a splash, a couple tablespoons of vinegar in there to keep the calcium off the side of my jars. And now I'm going to start packing my jars. It's very easy. Chopping the vegetables was the most tedious part of this job. I have seven, jar, seven quart jars because seven quarts will fit in my canner. I have some dark meat that I will put in each jar and here's my funnel. I will split the dark meat up between the jars so that it's even. And then the rest of it is all white, uh, light, uh, white meat. So I'll put all the white meat in now after. You don't need a funnel for this part. Why would I want to make chicken stew? What will I use this for? Actually, it's, I, I like this because it's versatile. Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread has been doing a curated March Canning Madness series for a couple of years. But this year, 2024, she opened it to be an open collaboration and that's where I come in. It's an open collaboration and I'm going to make some canning products through the month of March and take you along with me. If someone is unwell, I can serve just chicken soup. If I want to be a little more adventurous, I can make a cream of anything soup and make a creamy chicken soup. I can also use that creamy soup and make a chicken pot pie. Now I'm going to switch over to the vegetables that were frozen. That's a one cup measure. I probably only put in half a cup to start with. And then I can put more in later if I feel like it can handle more later. I don't want to overfill it. I have fresh vegetables to put in there too. If I use the uh, creamy soup base, I can make chicken pot pie. If I use it as a plain soup, I can make chicken and dumplings. Or I can thicken it and make just a chicken stew. I did the beef the same way. This is beef with uh, potatoes and carrots and onions and such. I can use that as uh, beef soup the way that it is. Or I can thicken it and I can make it a beef stew. I like versatility because we don't always feel like eating the same thing day after day and having it creamy instead of instead of uh, liquid or broth or having it I'm almost out of vegetables that's actually going pretty far uh, 
by having it creamy, I can have it one way. By having it plain, I can have it a different way. There's my funnel. This is onions. I chopped up one onion, but if you like onions you, or you're doing a larger batch, of course you can do more. I think onions will give this a great flavor that the frozen vegetables don't offer. The frozen vegetables is peas, carrots, corn, green beans, and there might be a few lima beans in there. This is green pepper. Green pepper offers a distinct flavor, and I really like that. As well as a shot of color. The green pepper I had was very small, so it's not going to go very far. And now celery. Now I'm just going to take the last of these mixed vegetables and put them on top. Alright, time for some full transparency. I ended up grabbing another bag of the mixed vegetables just to put more vegetables in those soups. They will be fine. They, I defrosted them and did the same thing as I did. It just took me a few minutes off camera to top those up. Now comes the fun part. We get to choose the broth. You can use your home canned broth. You can use a Tetra box of broth, which I don't buy. You can use a, a bouillon powder or cubes, or you can use plain water. I'm going to go with the bouillon in half. I don't like, I have some kind of weird thing that I don't like to use um, canned products in a canned product. This was done in September and these are done in March. I don't like making the canned goods last longer than they're planned. Make sure my kettle's boiling because for part of this I'm using boiling water. I'm following the instructions on the container. It says one teaspoon, one scoop per um, one cup of boiling water and I'm sure these are going to take two cups of boiling water so I'm going to put into uh, one and a half. I can always strengthen it later if I want to, right? So one and a half. You can always add more at the time of cooking but you can't take it away if you've spoiled it. So one and a half. Because there is salt in that bouillon powder, I'm not going to put salt in those jars, but I will put some salt, about half a teaspoon of salt, in each of these other jars. I have found that I like to, I like to can without salt, but I have found that my products are very much needing salt. So we'll just use a little. Normally you would put in... Um, most recipes would tell you to put in a teaspoon per quart jar. I just went with half. And I'm going to put in some pepper. I'm going to put in about half a teaspoon of garlic powder. You could put in fresh garlic if you'd rather. We like garlic. And then I'm going to put in some thyme. I am just putting boiling water in these up to the bottom ring which is one inch of headspace. While I'm waiting for that kettle to boil again I'm just going to make sure there are no air bubbles stuck in the bottom and I'm stirring things a little bit. I'm checking the headspace again they're all just fine. And I'm going to wipe the rims with a cloth dampened with vinegar because you don't want any, uh, there's something stuck here, you don't want any, um, any grease on the rings, on the, on the rims. I've had my lids soaking in hot water, not boiling, just the hottest tap water I can get. And that starts to soften the that starts to soften the, the rubber ring on there without melting it. It just warms it up a bit. The canner water is not cold, like frozen cold, but it's not uh, not going to be a problem for pressure cap for. It's not going to be a problem for thermal shock on my jars. I have a lump of. There it goes. This jar had a lump of the. Um, chicken seasoning, the broth, what do they call that? <laughs> this one had a, a chunk of the bouillon uh, mix, so I crushed it up and I'll stir these here in a second. 
Sometimes you'll get an air pocket stuck under meat and uh, it's difficult to work around. So we uh, make sure that that's not happening. I'm going to bring this to a boil. Steam will vent out of this for 10 minutes. I want solid steam for 10 minutes. This button will also pop up. I'll put my jiggler on there and I'll watch for that to start jiggling. And I will adjust the temperature on my stove so that keeps a steady jiggle without being too fast or hissing too much. And I will hold that for 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, I will shut my stove off and I will leave it undisturbed until this pressure here comes back down to zero. This button here has dropped and this will stop jiggling. At that point, I will remove the jiggler and make sure there's no steam coming out of there. I will loosen the lid, but leave it sitting on top for another half hour. 10 minutes is good, but I leave it for half an hour. And even then, as I pull the jars out, oh, I'll show you. Okay, the timer has gone off. It's time to shut off my canner. At this point, we just shut it off and let it sit. We don't remove the, the weight or we don't do anything else to it. Just shut it off, let it cool down for at least 10 minutes. You'll watch for this dial to go down to zero and for this to stop, it's jiggling. Okay, our button has dropped. The jiggler has stopped moving and the dial has dropped down to zero. We can take that off there. There's no steam coming out of there. Right now I will open this and let it steam for 10 minutes let it rest for 10 minutes and then i'll open it and take the jars out okay that's had time to vent so i'm not going to get scalded when i take the lid off let's get these jars out of the canner i love it when the pressure has come off but these jars are still bubbling so there we go, seven cans of chicken soup that can easily be made into a variety of meals, as I mentioned earlier. And I'm done my canning for the day. One more convenience food to go on the pantry shelf. Yum, yum.